come Saito can have bodyguard projections in Limbo? Why doesn't anyone else in the film have bodyguard projections when they go to Limbo? Cobb trusts the projection of his mischievous dead wife to serve as the anchor for his rope climb. Give him the kick! What? Uh, this guy's their architect and he doesn't know what the kick is? The architect gets every detail of Saito's apartment correct down to the pillow gun and the carpet stains, but gets the material of the carpet wrong. This Asian kid is so important to the story he doesn't get a name and then disappears for the rest of the film. There's surprisingly little wind and noise when standing underneath a helicopter. I have two things to say about this maze. One, it doesn't look very hard. Two, it's actually impossible. Look. Ding. 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 What invisible thing is she stepping over when she pulls the mirrors? Cobb knows he's going into Cobalt Energy's backyard and that they want him dead, but he has no escape plan in mind except to run? A white guy in Mombasa stands out like a black guy in Martha's Vineyard. Oh, there's someone yelling. That definitely means the guy we're chasing went this way. These bounty hunters are terrible shots. Well, this is beyond convenient. Honestly, why would a guy this omniscient even need the services of Cobb and company? Hey look, it's the scientist from Avatar, playing exactly the same character. Arthur feels the kick from just his chair starting to fall over, but earlier Cobb's chair fell all the way into the water before he felt the kick. The flight attendant pulls this curtain, then turns to get the briefcase, then turns to hand it to Arthur, which she's only able to do because the curtain is now open again. This guy is standing right here, firing into an open rear window, and he's not hitting anything at all? All this screaming, you would think he would have at least one witness to support the claim that he didn't kill his wife. She had herself declared sane by three different psychiatrists. Because that's not suspicious at all. So, I ran. But why didn't you just wait for forensic science to prove that your wife jumped from another building altogether? And, you know, your fingerprints aren't anywhere in the ransacked hotel room. If you can just dream up bigger guns, why the f*** don't they leave this warehouse in a tank? Van going in the water, that's a kick. Van tumbling over and over on its side, not a kick. Got it? Arthur changes directions between camera angles. Why do the rules of gravity extend to the second level dream, but not the third level snow mount? Shouldn't they've all gone flying off the mountain into the air? Fisher partners up with Saito, his company's biggest and only true rival in worldwide energy domination, and whom he doesn't recognize. The paradox thing is cool, but it only happens because the bad guys in this movie cannot aim. Arthur has a couple minutes. So you're saying in a couple of minutes, Arthur has an air fight with this Agent Smith dude, retrieves the charges, arranges these dudes in a stack, obtains a bunch of wire, bundles up these idiots, moves them down the hall, puts them in the elevator, places the charges on the elevator wire, blows the elevator wires, places the charge on the elevator, unties the idiots, and then blows the elevator all in a couple of minutes? Just use the defibrillator to revive him. I'm pretty sure that's not as easy as she makes it sound. I mean, Maul's gonna be down there. I know where to find her. Fisher. Mal is Cobb's projection and not a real person, so why does she go to Limbo after Cobb shoots her? And how is she able to kidnap Fisher before Cobb even gets to Limbo? Soaked when they get out of the ocean, completely dry just moments later. Why is he making a ransom deal with his own projection? He's basically just talking to himself here. He could be rescuing Fisher. Considering the kick Arthur's setting up in the hotel dream level above, and the fact that everyone gets out of Limbo by suicide, is there even a reason for this explosion? Or does Eames just like to blow it up? Ariadna forces two people to die horrible falling deaths from a skyscraper when she could have just shot them both in the head with the gun she used to shoot Mal. Cobb is basically the same age, but Saito's super old, even though they both entered Limbo about the same time. U.S. citizens don't get passports stamped upon returning to the country. Awesome. Happily ever after. Hey, do the Cobal engineering people still want to murder him? Okay. Let's talk about totems. Why is Cobb's totem just a normal top, but everyone else's totem is weighted or hollowed out or otherwise jacked up? Arthur won't let Ariadna touch his weighted die because only he knows what number it's supposed to land on, but then everyone knows a top falls. There's nothing unique about the behavior of Cobb's totem. Also, why does a totem show up in the dream in the first place? Does the dreamer take it with them subconsciously? Are they able to control it? And if they are, why can't they control all kinds of other shit with their minds while they're in dreams? Why do they even have to be behind the wheel of a car to make it drive? Saito touches Cobb's totem, which is a no-no, but then it, that was in limbo, so is that bad? Why do the totems even have to be there inside the dreams? Like, why can't the method for determining your own realities be the simple fact that you have a totem? in your pocket. Just don't take the totem into the dream. Do I have a totem in my pocket right now? Hmm, no. Still dreaming. So you're not gonna tell us whether he's dreaming or not. You're just gonna let that top spin and make it wobble a bit and tease us with a cut to black. You brilliant mother Man, I can't wait to see Nolan's new Batman. Whoa, what the f*** is this?